How are you going to afford it in a year if it if they lower the interest rates to go to three, four, five percent? Some of these realtors that are being irresponsible just telling everybody, well, what's up? I hope you're doing super well. I was listening to a recent podcast of Patrick Bad David. Uh, you know, we did, I, I went down and interviewed him in person at his office. I'll link that interview below if you didn't see it. I confronted him on his prediction last year that the real estate market was going to crash worse than 2008, which up to this point, it has not. A lot of people are still calling for that. Um, I feel like in this podcast, he gives, he, he kind of like nonchalantly gives some advice here to real estate agents. And I found it very interesting what he said. And, you know, the, the, I'm going to play this clip for you. I want to watch this clip with you. Uh, because the whole thing is very interesting how he lays the whole thing out. And he he's talking about this divide between, you know, middle class and upper class and the top one percent. And it's a hundred million percent true. <clears throat> and this is what, you know, a lot of the great economists were really fearing. You know, I, I just interviewed Logan from Housing Wire. Uh, I'm going to put out that interview in, in the next 24 hours or so. Guy is just a wealth of knowledge on the housing market. And he actually looked at it back in, you know, 2011, 12, 13, and said that between 2020 and 2025, that there was going to be this major divide and that we were going to see. And, and it, this was based on the profile of home buyers. Um, and he knew there was going to be this massive generation of Gen Z and millennials coming up who want to own homes. Everybody says, Gen Z doesn't want to own homes. You know, millennials don't want to own homes. No, that's not true. Every single survey that comes out shows that close to 90% of millennials and Gen Z do want to own homes. They feel like um, homes are too expensive and that is the problem. And how do you solve that problem? No one, that you can't solve this problem. That's, that is the problem. Um, you know, we're, we're in this situation uh, where inventory is so low. How do you get out of that hole? They said the Airbnb was going to happen and we're going to have a crash. They said that the, um, you know, the, the second home market, there's 14 million second homes or vacant homes in the country. And if those start selling that, that didn't work. Uh, now it's foreclosures, the uptick in foreclosures up 34%. It's up 34%. It, we're not even halfway back to where we were pre pandemic. Um, and pre-pandemic, mind you, was a healthy market. You know, of course, zero foreclosures is the healthiest of markets, right? Where no one's getting foreclosed on. But um, that's unrealistic. Where we were pre-pandemic was a good place to be where it's realistic. And we're not seeing it. We're not seeing that. Why? Well, number one, 45% of all homes are owned free and clear in, in, the, in America. The ones that are left, the other 55%, you got 90% of them under 6% rates. You got, uh, I believe it's 60 something percent under 5%. Um, all the way down to 30% of mortgages are below 3%. So the people sitting in these homes, their payments right now, their current payments that are locked in for 30 years are extremely cheap extremely cheap and they're not going anywhere and we're not going to run into a problem if we ran into a you know job loss recession where everybody's losing their jobs we could see some forced selling there um even with people that have you know a lot of equity built up and stuff like that but we're, we're not even close to that kind of conversation when it comes to the job market we're not it's not even close um, the data is not even to where we can even open up that dialogue and say, okay, this is something that might happen. Um, so we're in a predicament when it comes to home prices. Now, if you lower rates, what's going to happen? Inventory is going to go down. Why? Because trade up sellers going to add a listing to the market and take one off. And first time home buyers are going to flood the market, taking the rest of the inventory off the market. We're going to hit a new all time low, which right now we're in an all time low when it comes to home uh inventory all-time low and if interest rates come down we're going to hit another all-time low but transactions are going to skyrocket because you're going to have all this turnover happening um and prices will increase they won't increase like double digits you know we could see 10 percent, but they're not going to increase by the 15 20 percent we saw in 2021 and 
you know, 2000, the end of 2020, it was rise, rising at that rate. We're not going to see that, but we will see increases, which means what? The prices aren't going to go down and prices are really high. And so, you know, we're just in this new normal where there's this divide of people that can afford, which is very small amount of people considering the population, and then the amount of people who want to buy but can't because they've been priced out j just purely on the 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 mortgage payment, right? Just the mortgage payment, and so there's the problem. But anyway, I digress on all of that stuff. Um, you look at foreign markets. You look at you know Australia, Canada, and some of these markets. Uh, they don't have 30 year fixed rates. And some of the gurus on the internet say, well, that's the problem with America. That's why prices are going up so high and there's no inventory because people are locked in to these low rates. Would you rather have that scenario? Because no system is perfect. Would you rather have a scenario where people are locked in and they're good and they have a place to stay and they have confidence and you know they're they're locked in and they're happy? Um, or would you want an environment like these other countries that have short-term rates where their payment could literally double in five years? And now you have to move and it's carnage. It's carnage everywhere. People are foreclosing, you know, losing their house and everything else. No, you don't want that. Okay. Um, and, and keep in mind in these other countries, prices are really high. So it's not like the 30 year fixed rate made prices go really high. And these other countries don't have that. Yes, they do. They're actually higher than we are in a lot of these countries um, that have these short term rates. Anyway, just going on and on and on here. It's just a lot of things that run through my mind all day long. Uh, I want to dig into this, this uh, what Pat's saying here um, and his advice to real estate agents. And I believe this is kind of like a, you know, an advice to agents and home buyers, right? He's kind of throwing it out there. All right, let's, let's dig in. I want to ask both of you guys. So Tom, is there going to be a breaking point? I know, um, John, uh, Michael Burry, Pat, his, he's predicted, he's bet against it. Do you guys feel that it's it's something that's inevitably going to happen and this administration, Pat, is just hanging on for as long as they can so it doesn't happen during their administration? Can I, can I give you a scenario? Please, please. You know, uh, uh, I'm having this conversation with Brandon, and you know Brandon is biz doc on unusual suspects. On steroids, because he looks oh, he's like one of the smartest guys. I love him. I'm sorry, I forgot about his biceps. Yeah, oh, he's got to do double bound on the next Brandon one. Brandon, I love the shirt he wore on the last episode. But let me yeah. let me kind of talk about this whole thing you're talking about with uh, with uh, market crash. Okay, uh, with uh, uh, whether it's going to eventually backfire, something happen. Got you. You know what's worse than a market crash? What? A market crashing up. <laughs> you know what happens when a market crashes up, like Venezuela did? No. Here's what it means. Okay. Oof. Do you know? <laughs> oh my God. You know where I'm going with this. So these guys Wait, printed trillions of dollars into the economy. Mm -hmm. That money's in the economy. Printed, so, Pat? You said printed? No, no. That money's what? in the economy. They fed the economy trillions of dollars. Okay. So that money goes where? Whoever has the most value to be shown, that's where the money flows. Okay. The money doesn't stay with a person that doesn't know how to manage the money. If you don't have value, the money goes away to somebody else. Okay. A reverse market crash, what happened? Do you know what would happen if right now Jerome Powell decreased rates to 6%, 5%, 4%, 3%? Do you know what would happen today? You think that house that's $900,000, that the value hasn't moved even when they raised the rates to 8%, mm -hmm. that $900,000 house is going to be $1.4 million. So right there, okay, right there. He's talking about the fact that if rates come down, okay, these prices that haven't moved when rates go up, he's talking about when rates come down, that $900,000 house is going to be $1.4 million. All right. Interesting coming from the guy who said it's going to crash worse in 2008. Let's listen in. If it goes to $1.4 million and Dow Jones all of a sudden goes to 48000 you know what just happened? This whole concept of rich getting richer, poor getting poorer. It became rich getting richer, poor getting poor on steroids. The separation between the two gets wider and wider. The gap, take the poor, middle America's always been like this. Then you have the rich top 1%, whatever the percentage is. You're going to see the gap go like, vroom, vroom, vroom. Mm -hmm. Did you understand what I mean? Like the, rich, the this is going to get bigger. The top rich is going to get bigger. The middle is going to come lower, but the poor is going to get bigger. 
How the hell are you going to, if you can't afford a $900,000 house right now, how are you going to afford it in a year if it if they lower the interest rates to go to 3 4 5%? Some of these realtors that are being irresponsible just telling everybody, well, wait till the rates come down. If the rates come down, it's reverse market crash. Right there. Right there. If the rates come down, reverse market crash, agents are irresponsible, irresponsible telling buyers to wait till rates come down. Okay, now, now I'm just going to sit on this for a second. Listen to what he's saying. It's irresponsible for agents to tell people to wait on rates to come down. So what is he saying? When should you buy, Pat? He's saying that you should buy right now because when rates come down, prices are going to go up. You would rather own a home at today's prices if you can afford it, by all means. If you can't afford a house, then we're not talking about you. If you can't afford a house, then you're at a stage before being able to buy a house, which means you're trying to put together a plan, a financial plan to go out and buy a house, um, whatever that means for you. But understanding that the finances and the numbers behind what it takes to buy a house and then putting a plan in place to hit those numbers so that you can go buy a house, that's not in this conversation. That's for another conversation if you're not to that level yet. And if you've been priced out of the market, that sucks. But it's reality, and it's not going to change. That's not going to change. Just because you can't afford a house doesn't mean that prices are going to fall. Okay, that, That's not what that means. Now, if every single person out there could not afford a house, then yes, prices could fall. But that's not the case. There's a large group of people that can't afford it, but then there's a big group that still can't afford Okay, And then you've got all the homeowners who have all of this equity that's been building up over the last two, three, four years who bought. I mean, I need to look at the data and see how many homes in America were bought before, you know, say 2020, before the pandemic. How many homes were bought and are still owned by those owners who bought pre-pandemic, whether it be from 2010 to, to 20, 2000 to 2010, 90 to 2000? How many homes in America are currently owned by someone who bought them pre-pandemic? That number is enormous. And you know how much equity they have? Okay, so they can afford to go out and buy a home. A lot of these people, too, have really high incomes. So the median mortgage payment right now is around $3,000. I hate to say it, but for a lot of people, that is nothing. Okay, that's a lot of people for that's a lot for a lot of people. A lot of people can't afford that. I get it, but it's not a lot for a lot of people as well. Um, so you just have to understand this. If you're in the boat where you can't afford it, okay, don't stereotype everyone in the country that they also can't afford it because they can. That's why prices continue to go up because somebody is buying these homes. Okay, so what I'm saying for the people that can afford can afford to buy a home if you're sitting on the sidelines waiting on interest rates to come down big mistake because you could own it today at today's prices and then renegotiate the, the rate later why wouldn't you do that because when rates come down guess what you've got the trade-up seller who puts their home on the market and now they're in the market to, to upgrade to a new home so you're fighting over houses with them you got first time home buyers that are going to flood the market when rates come down you're going to be fighting over houses with them you still got 40% of homes selling in less than 2 weeks right now when they hit the market we have we're still nowhere near we're, we're half we're half of the inventory that we were pre pandemic which was already really low now if you don't think the market's going to pick up when rates get into that under seven range, look at home builders. A new construction home builder sales are up 22%. And why is that? Well, it's because they are offering buy downs and they're getting people into those sub six and even, even below six uh, mortgage rates. And so when you look at that market, you realize there's a lot of buyers buying at, you know, 6.5, 5.5 to 6.5, a lot of buyers, 22 percent up year over year on new construction, you think, yeah, well, those buyers are going to be eating up the existing homes, not new construction, existing homes. If, if, if they can get it for the same rate, yeah, you'll have some people buying new construction, but new construction normally takes up 
15 to 20 percent of the market. Right now, it's about 33 percent of the market, as well as cash buyers. 33 percent of, of, of home sales right now are cash deals. They don't even need a mortgage. They're not even worried about rates. They're just paying cash. Um, so, you know, I we could go we could go on and on and on here. Let's dive back in because a lot of there's a lot more interesting things that he says here that I just found interesting. And I figured you would want to to hear this. I'm going to link this video in the description. You want that to happen to Venezuela? Like what happened to Venezuela to happen? Oh, it'll never happen. You're just fear porn, all this stuff. Really? People can't afford to buy a house right now. There's a reason why they're renting. You're not going to have a customer qualifying for the $1.3 million home. Yes, you have equity in your house. But even if you got equity in your house, you got to find a buyer. Buyer can't afford it. There's a reason why we have so many strikes going on in America right now. People are saying, I can't afford my life. I can't afford a $900,000 loan. How the hell am I supposed to buy $900,000, $600,000 house? So to me, when you're saying it's shitty. Well, if you can't afford a $900,000 house, then you rent. You rent and you put together a plan to be able to afford that house that you want because things aren't going to change. And he's talking about, you know, yeah, your house is worth 1.3. You'll have some equity built up. You know, that's great. But where are you going to find a buyer? There are plenty of buyers. There are plenty of buyers and also historic, historic pent up demand. We have more pent up demand right now in America to buy, for people who want to buy homes than we've ever seen. We, we don't even really, we, we have no earthly clue of how many people are out there. Sellers who need an extra bedroom but can't because they're locked into a rate. Uh, first time home buyers, the, the the Gen Zs and the millennials who are coming into their home buying years, which is the largest group. I mean, there's more Gen Zs and millennials than there are uh, the population of Japan. OK, uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Eventually going to hit the fan essentially is what you're asking yeah. for. Uh, the, 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 the amount, the heart, the amount of hate and pressure Jerome Powell has right now for taking the rates where he's at. Uh, he would have taken it higher. You're going to give an update on the rate here that he would have gone up another quarter of a point or whatever that is. Uh, by the way, do, do we have, is this, uh, okay, check this out. Here's the Venezuela's uh, reverse market crash. No one in the right mind thinks that, Rob, I just texted it to you. No one in the right mind, does anybody think that Venezuela has a great economy? Does anybody think Venezuela has a great economy? Does anybody say, oh, Venezuela, their market is freaking amazing. Stock market, da, 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 da. Pull this up real quick and show, show what happened to Venezuela's market right there. Okay, stock market. This is what you call a reverse market crash, where the market just goes, bingo, boom, straight to the roof, okay? And it looks like, hey, guys, look how great the economy is doing. Look how fantastic. No, no, it's a lie. It's a lie. The top 1% is killing it. The rest are getting destroyed. Watch this here, okay? You know who would want something like that? Guess who would want something like that? The top 1%. The, 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 the top 0.1%. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, let's do it. I got my money in the market. I'm going to be fine. Yeah. Overnight billionaires. <clears throat> the level, by the way, look at the months. Just go look at the months. Actually, yeah, look, do you do you guys really see this chart? Or do you see what this chart is? One week, like, 10 months. Guys, it's only a one-year chart. Mm -hmm. A year ago, where was their stock? Venezuelan stock market all the way at the, at the top. Was that IBVC. It was at 10,000 a year ago. Six, it's at 63,000. The market's gone up 630% in less than a – Tom, do you see this chart? In, <clears throat> yep. In less than a year. So I pray, and every American person and realtors and loan officers should be praying for rates to stay the way they are for a little longer. They should. At least another year or two, it needs to stay at this rate. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we level off at six. FYI. If unemployment and now, now I want to ask you guys in the comments, do you agree with that? Do you think that rates should stay higher longer? You know, around eight percent. Should they stay at eight percent for another year or two? Do you do you agree with what he's saying there? Because I'll just get my two cents before we start it back up. Um, I, I kind of agree with him there. I think it should stay a little bit higher longer. Um to, to allow everyone to be acclimated to these higher rates and then slowly come down. I think that's the best case scenario. But again, I <laughs> neither one of us here control it. Things don't start moving. You know what Powell's going to do? He has to go up another quarter. He has to go up another quarter until that moves. So 
there's a bigger crisis that's brewing right now that most people are not talking about. It's called a reverse market crash. That's a scary side. Yeah, and let, let me let me paint a, a simple picture for you. OK, step one, the U.S. government gave out like one point four trillion dollars in stimulus checks mm -hmm. over the next six months. And we've talked about it on the show. Credit card balances dropped to under half a trillion dollars, like four hundred. OK, then they went all the way back up to nine hundred. At the same time, the stock market started running. You want to know why? You know where all that you know where all that credit card debt is? Mm. Stuff. People bought stuff, mm -hmm. stuff that was sold by companies on the stock market. When they remember, they were saying, well, you know, we were getting out of covid and you know, the market's way up. So I guess things are OK. No, no, no. We printed one point four trillion dollars. People paid down their credit cards temporarily, but went back to their spending habits. Restaurants were open, able to travel, and they spent all the way up now to the credit cards are at an all time high right at a trillion dollars right now. And all that money, it went to the stock market. How to go to the stock market? The profits of the companies that sold them all the stuff. Do you see it? So it runs to the top. That's part one. And part two, I wish we could find it. Uh, Rob, this, just, this is this is an issue that no one's talking. Do you, about. Do you guys it's follow crazy. how that works? Yeah. The money runs to the bottom line of companies and the pockets of the top one percent that own those companies. Right. Now watch this. You remember the you you just saw the uh, chart Venezuelan chart. So go to Zillow and find me any house in Fort Lauderdale over two million dollars. And then Pat, while he's looking, so that's going to separate like the poverty, like there's Rabo Khirbela. Wow, very bad in the Syria. Yeah, it's not a. Uh, so that and you're saying but, that that might happen the way, here. If Powell doesn't lower rates, it's not going to happen. So the key is for him to hold ground and not fall for any you know, phone calls that he's going to get in the next nine months about changing and lowering the rates so the market moves For because election, election is coming around the Great corner. Point. Scroll the bottom. I right don't the know chart. what Powell's going to do, but we will know to give him proper credit by January of 2025. It's going to be a very hard next nope. 15 months for Powell. And so, so about why like event. Now, what do you think about that? What do you think about an election year? Because I was talking to Logan with Housing Wire and, uh, you know, we were talking about the history of different election years and, you know, what normally happens during election years concerning this kind of thing. And he said something very interesting. He was like, you know, when the Fed is fighting inflation, they don't care if it's an election year. They're going to continue to fight inflation right now. The timing is that, you know, they're 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 still fighting the inflation war, um, but it's getting better. And the more time that goes by. It's a little stubborn. It's staying there between three and four. They're going to continue fighting. Maybe they're going to, I would think they're going to raise it um, a little more before they, you know, level off and come back down at some point, but they still got a little way to go. Everybody feels pretty certain that rates are going to drop a little uh, in 2024. It just happens to be, this is what Logan said. It just happens to be an election year. Okay. It's not the fact that it's an election year and rates are definitely going to come down because they always come down during election year. It's just kind of a coincidence is the way he put it. What do you think? Let me know. Venezuela screwed then, right? What, what, from what they just did, their future does not look right. Why do you think Venezuela finally Maduro agreed to come and negotiate with Biden to say we're willing to sell oil to you and we're willing to do a real public election fair even if I lose, why would Maduro agree for something like this? Because his people are getting crushed. Wow. Cru public embarrassment on what's going on with Maduro in Venezuela right now. I think Absolute Zillow public was, embarrassment. Zillow is taking the charts off, Pat. You know the one I'm talking about? They used to have the charts in here. Scroll down. Yeah, they show it at the bottom the, usually. The pricing history, Price and history. it goes up. There you go. Take a look. Does this look like the Venezuelan oh stock chart? God. Do you do you this notice is, something is, that happened? This is not normal, bro. Oh, my. but by the way, okay. If you guys want to talk about my house, let's, let's talk about my let's house. Let's print money. Okay, yeah. Tom, let's talk about my house. You know, there was a record breaking sale in Fort Lauderdale last week. Mm -hmm. My realtor sold it. You know what the house sold for? $40 million in Fort Lauderdale. You know how big is the land? 0. 0.4 acres. No way. Our house is one in 1.2, 1.3 acres. Underwater, 810 uh, feet of water frontage. One of the biggest in all of Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. We bought the house for $20.4 million, two years. That's the house right there. Zoom in. That right there. When, when is the date on this? Can you zoom in so I can actually give the real date? Beachfront home. Just that. Was, that, that October that's, 13th. That square right that's here, That's 0.4 acres sold for $40 million. What? Record breaking. By the way, our house that we bought for $20.4 million two years ago, we closed on June of 2021. That house today is a $40 million house. Mm -hmm. Some say more. Okay. 
Now, I may sit there and say, look at me. I made this money. Totally get it. But guess what? I want people living close to my community to have economic growth because if people around you are having economic growth, your kids are in a safer community, you're doing better, you're not worried about going shopping, you're not worried about what your wife is doing, you're not worried about what your employees are doing, you feel safer. Yep. You want the people in your community to be doing better. This is not good, okay? This is very good money-wise. Yeah, we made a quick, you know, $20 million, say, on the house. Yes, but if if this continues... Yeah, it's going to be a very, very catastrophic issue. When you see numbers like this and one year go like this, not good. It's not real. It's fake. Now you hear what he said. He said if this continues, but when they showed the Zillow chart, you saw the number, you saw the the line. It went up, but then what? It went like this. It leveled out, and it leveled out just as it did. I mean, this isn't the first time we've seen like double digit appreciation over a couple of years. This really wasn't anything crazy, honestly. We saw. Four or five years back in the 40s, we saw six years of double-digit appreciation for home prices in the late 70s. Um, and everybody thought, oh, what goes up must come down. This is crazy. Prices won't so high. Unaffordability. The same stuff. But guess what? Appreciation still continue to happen from those points. It's normal. Three to five percent, two to four percent, six percent. It got back to normal. OK, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I believe is going to happen here. I believe that we're going to be in a position where, yes, we've went up really high, but we've set a new floor, just like we did in the 40s, just like we did in the 70s when inflation went up and, and, and mortgage rates went up and inventory went down and all. Oh, it's the same story over and over and over again. Now, 2008 was completely different. That's a completely different ball game. This is nothing. And I'm sure that we can all agree that this is nothing compared to 2008. When you look at all the economic data and how everything's laid out, it's completely different. Um, it's more comparable to like 70s and even back in the 40s, so on and so forth. Um, but the fact remains, if, if this continues, yes, if we continue to see double-digit increases and things you know, skyrocket to the moon, yeah, that's going to be bad. But I don't think that's going to happen. And when you see rates come down, they're not going to come down to the 3%, to the 4%. You know, somewhere in that six range, if you see something with a, a six and a half, that's going to spur the market on. And, and, and a six and a half would be a good point where we see that three to 5% appreciation. Uh, we see more inventory entering the market, not flooding the market, but entering into the market. Um, it would be a very healthy market. So there, there's a there's a mortgage rate. That, that creates this balance in the market where things will be healthy, but we're not going to see anything crash and burn. I can't wait for you guys to see my, my interview with Logan from Housing Wire. Like I say, I'll get that out in the next day or so. Um, this guy's uh, he, he is the lead analyst for Housing Wire, so he, he knows his stuff. So that's going to be a real interesting one, but I don't see this continuing. Let's continue on here. It's purely temporary, by the way. If this continues, your kids are going to live with you forever. And Vinny and I are moving. I'm going to move in, guys. Let's, <laughs> your garage, let's figure something out. Let's, your garage is bigger than my let's apartment. Let's figure something out to do something like that. But no, I mean to be to be serious. As as much as you know, we're having these types of conversations, kind of like well, what's going to happen here. I just hope Jerome Powell and the establishment doesn't have dirt on him from his past with a girl or with a man, or anything else, or with money, or with his kids, or anything, to come to him saying, we have this on you, you better lower the rates. I hope that knock doesn't happen to Jerome Powell. Because if it does, it'll be temporary market going up, celebration. Sugar high. It'll be catastrophic for the next four years. And what, speaking of 25 Powell, through 29 will be catastrophic if he lowers the rates. Speaking of Powell, it sounds like he's doing something, what I think is, is sensible right now. He's come out and saying, we were expecting a Halloween quarter point and then nothing to the end of first quarter. Mm -hmm. That was all the Fed Board of Governors were all talking about the same things. They look at economic factors. Well, they don't want to spook the market. Another quarter point will spook the, um, excuse me, the equity markets, the stock markets. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do that. And they also feel that right now inflation has not gone down to the 2% target they wanted it to go down to. It's, it's, it's fighting hard to stay at like 4%, give or take. So, But what Powell has said with the war, with uncertainty, with a lot of things on there, 
I'm going to have a rate increase pause. And everyone on the Fed board seems to say that they're going to go through fourth quarter. We're one month in the fourth quarter now, almost, almost November, and through first quarter. So we're going to get to the end of first quarter because the end of first quarter is when you see how good Christmas was, how good was spending, how good was all that. And take a look at how it's going. So what they're saying is, I have given you the remedy for your food poisoning. Now you just have to kind of wait it out. You know what I mean? You have to wait. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> talking about waiting to the end of the first quarter. I think that's sensible because I don't want volatility. What Pat is talking about is volatility. And it runs in two directions. Yeah. Crash, crash. Ha ha. On the rich. You lost everything. Yeah. Well, so did your 401k. So did other things that are going on. And now it's near impossible you for you to want that. buy that. Yeah. You don't want it. No. You know, it's easy to laugh at the risk. What are they going to do? Print another $1.4 trillion? Get ready for $16 egg. Trust me. Trust me. I'm, I'm telling you. Like, even, right, you know how many people are coming right now saying, Pat, I can get you 45 I can get you. You know how many strange phone calls? We're, we're not selling a house, bro. Mm. But, but the, 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 the way to capitalize right now would be to sell, sit on cash, rent, two years later, come back, buy, kind of like play that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. No, we, 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 but so, and then the, the, when you're talking to your investment bankers, we are talking to your money managers, it's like, okay, do you go equity? Do you not go equity? You're talking to your peers. Okay. If you go equity, rates stay high, unemployment takes a hit, recession comes next year, equities could get destroyed the next 12 months, could get destroyed the next 12 months. But if you're not in equities, Jerome Powell lowers the rates, and it goes to whatever, 4%, 5%, that was going to go to 41,000, 42,000, potentially within 12 to 18 months. Yes or no? It'll go like this, yep. skyrocketing, okay? So then your risk is, do I stay in the market? Do I not stay in the market? Both ways, it's risky today. There is no like path to look at because we've never experienced printing the kind of money that we did going through a pandemic that we did, going through working from home shit that we did, going through two wars that we got going on, one of them being so unstable. This is like, there is no financial analyst that knows the right investments to make today to whether whatever is possible, capable of happening in the next three, six, 12 months. So what do you do? You put a little everywhere and you just, just have wait. to do that. You have to do that. But, uh, you have to own a little bit of gold. Okay. This is not a sponsorship. I just tell you the best sponsorship is when I'm not doing a sponsorship. You have to own a little bit of gold. You have to look at what Bitcoin did. You know what Bitcoin hit? Have you guys seen what Bitcoin no, just hit? It's right back up. Go to Bitcoin. Where's Bitcoin at right now? Something? Yeah, look at Bitcoin. Like people like Bitcoin just hit what? 35,000, 36, 35,000. Well, Bitcoin was like go go go, go six to six months or something. Go your go uh, last uh, year. Go last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at that. Hit 15,000. Nice. It's at 35,000 now. And look how it's going up. Double. You know, it, look, BlackRock just bought uh, I think BlackRock just introduced Bitcoin ETFs. It's it's so unpredictable today on what's going on. The so danger. You, go, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. You got all I want to say is I'll, I'll put it, give it back to you. You just got to make sure you're, you know, the concept of diversification, you know, normally is not something I would say all the time. Today, if you can predict the future and you're willing to go fully risk, which I'm comfortable with, then do that. You're taking a risk because you could have a massive this or a massive this. But if you don't have that risk tolerance, your solution right now is diversification. Yep. And. Printing money is dangerous. And Pat and I talked about, and actually I talked about, I'll take credit for this. I thought the interest rates were going to go all the way to 10%. I said so. And they've made it to 8%, mm -hmm. 8 and an eighth. As a matter of fact, uh, last week they were actually 8 and an eighth, even if you had 670 credit right at. Jeez. Right now they're about seven and a half, seven through quarter. But there's something Pat said that people don't remember. Um, and you, you may not remember, and I, I'm not trying to insult the audience, but you go back a year ago when Pat said he was really reacting. We printed what percent of the total money we had ever printed in six months? Do you remember what the number 40%. was? 40%. 40% of the total money ever printed in these United States. Now I say print, a lot of people get upset. It's issued because it's digital now too. It's not paper. It's not all paper, but we call that money supply. 40% that you did it in six months and and look what you did to those housing prices. Mm -hmm. You did a Venezuela, right? Now, 10% is now. Not and so I, 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 I say now that people say, do you understand now? You know, it's like, the I, I, I just, but I'm telling you, Tom, I hope Powell doesn't break. I hope, I hope he doesn't, too. doesn't break. Cause he needs to stay. It needs to stay like this. And, and it's going to be painful.
guys, uh, uh, look, you know, uh, not to do a plug for my book, but I'm talking to Chris Williamson uh, last week on his podcast. What a freaking stud of a guy, by the way. This guy, can you pull up his picture, Chris Williamson? He's doing this podcast. And I pull up to this place. I'm like, Sam, where are we doing a podcast? He rented out this entire place that filled with bookshelves. Absolutely sick, sick uh, a set that he had. And we start talking. And we had a nice two and a half hour conversation. One of the biggest podcasters in the, in the world. He's a stud. And we're talking about the book that's coming out, Choose Your Enemies Wisely, Business Planning for the Audacious Few. By the way, uh, it comes out December 5th, but I'm about to, we're about to release uh, the introduction and chapter one of the book. If you want to get a copy of the introduction and chapter one way before everybody else gets it, text the word book to 310-340-1132. Text the word book to 310-340-1132. In the next few days, if you purchase a copy or, or the Audible and the book, we're going to send you to a chapter one and introduction, but just hang tight. You can place the order and then you'll show me the receipt. We'll send it to you. But text the word book to 310-340-1132. Let me continue. A year and a half ago, I'm consulting for these real estate guys, mortgage guys, different companies, not necessarily companies that is mortgage guys, but guys that are in the mortgage industry. And I'm telling them, listen, you have one too many Rolls Royce. You have one too many Ferraris. You have one too many Chanel purses. You have one too many of these things. You're not doing the right thing. It's too risky. Okay. Settle down a little bit. You're too loud. You're too arrogant right now. You're too cocky. You think you know it all. You think you're untouchable. You think you're not going to be hit. You're not paranoid enough. You're not concerned enough. You're not prepared enough. You're not anticipating what could happen next 5, 10, 15 moves. The crisis. You're drinking too much. Okay? The, the CEO of the company, the oldest company in America that's 1,500 years old from Japan, they said, what is the key to success and for you guys to be around? He says, don't drink too much. What he was talking about is don't drink your own success too much. Don't get too, like, oh, do consume. you see what I'm, yeah, consume with your own success too much, right? So today, people are not prepared for what's about to come, you know? So for some people that have been preparing for this, their wealth is going to go up 5, 10, 20, 40 times because they've been preparing for this. But those that are not, they're going to get destroyed. For the people that are in the community, I said, how could you say this mortgage? We need rates to get down. I'm, I'm getting destroyed. No, you thought 3% was going to be around for 20 years, and your business model is a failed model. Mm -hmm. You rely too much on 3% interest rates, which is fake. We can't have it at a rate like that. So we have to go back to being responsible. But I think the next 6, 12, 18 months, the whole concept of Team Spur, Spur, Spur. spur. How, how much, because you mentioned the election, Pat, and Powell, and pressure, and who knows what the hell they're saying. How much of this situation, which is a volatile situation, is going to affect voting for the for the election. Oh, all the, those people in the middle. Of, it, this this is a this is a very very volatile times we're living in, dude. When Jamie Dimon says, "This is the most dangerous times we've lived in in the last few decades," not good. Why would he say that? You you your it's bank true. that you are the CEO to transact seven trillion dollars. It circulates every single day. Seven Why would you say this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades? He, you know what, you know what a job of a CEO of uh, JP Morgan. Let me just kind of give you an idea what his job is. Every day he wakes up. You know what his job is? This job. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say or do to calm my customers' nerves? Wow. Yeah. Guess what? You don't say something like this. Yeah. This may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. CEO Jamie Dimon. Then, then you got Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger coming out talking about what they think is going to happen in real estate next year. Or you got Ray Dalio saying World War III, likely it is now 50%. Michael Burry. Right. Why would they say that? Yeah. Why would they say that? They don't want a market crash. Their money's tied to all of this. We were warned that Trump was going to cause all this stuff. Yeah. It didn't happen under Trump. And now it's all happening, and they're just finding other excuses why and all that kind of thing. And by the way, it's so interesting you're saying that. This is why billionaires like Shamat are saying, I voted for Hillary. Switched. I voted for Biden. But now I'm kind of starting to ask myself, maybe what Trump did was a B plus. Yeah. Maybe we need him back. Mm -hmm. maybe the, the approval rating you're saying with uh, Biden, all 30%, 30 or 31%, 30 from Democrats in some areas. It's like they, this is so for people, there's only so much. You got to love Pat. I'll tell you what, man, he makes a lot of sense when he's talking about all this. And and what what really struck me there, because I went through 2008, I lost everything. I was bankrupt, homeless, sleeping in my car, all that stuff. It was sleeping on people's couches, eating out of people's refrigerators. Uh, you know, I worked two jobs, roofing houses, serving tables, worked on an oil rig. I went through all that um, and I came back. And so if you've never been through one of those moments, it's exactly what he's talking about. The people that have been preparing for this moment, 
your net worth is going to 10, 20, 30, 40 X over the next five years. Yes. I am one of those people. Why? Because I went through the last one. I learned that you need to prepare before that. I was only thinking about today. I wasn't thinking about this year. I wasn't thinking about next year. I wasn't thinking about three to five to 10 years out. And if you've never been through a moment like this, you might get caught. You might get caught blindsided and not see this coming. And you might be one of the ones that gets crushed during this moment. And guess what? That's going to be your learning experience so that you can get up, dust yourself off and start preparing for the next one that's going to happen in the next 10, 12 years, whatever the case may be. And you're going to say, you're going to look at all the people like myself that took advantage of the situation and was ready. And you're going to see how they got ready. And you'd be like, okay, that's how the game is played. That's how I'm going to play the game. And you're going to start building your different, your, your life, your, your business and your life differently from that point. Again, I'm going to link the uh, interview I did with Pat down in Fort Lauderdale at his office. Had a lot of fun. Great guy. Um, enjoyed uh, meeting with him and doing the interview and everything else. So oh, check so that cool. out. And uh, outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you Look. on the next one. Let's go. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs and these lanes ain't like me.